All right, Queens, welcome to another episode of the mini client interview series. I've got another one of my previous soul clients joining me today. I cannot wait to have this conversation. So Rachel, welcome. Hello. Hello. So Thank you. Thank you. And before we go into the deeper questions, I'm going to fire 10 quick questions for you and just want you to answer the first thing that comes up. Okay. Okay. Go. So number Ready. one is kind of like three in one. Number one, name, age, and profession. Uh, my name's Rachel Hoy. I'm 35 and I'm a development manager. So I work in property development. Number two, sweet or savory? Oh, sweet. Sweet baby. Number three, bird, a bird? Ignore that. <laughs> Early bird or night owl? I'm a night owl. Weights or cardio? Weights. Hate cardio. Hate <laughs> psychopaths like cardio. Who wants to feel out of breath? It's horrible. I kind of do. Oh, I hate it. <laughs> hate it. Three things you love. Um, family, friends, and chocolate. Oh yeah. <laughs> I think chocolate would have been my number one then, really. <laughs> Have you got a favourite quote or mantra? Evidence, absence of evidence is not evidence of absence, or is it the other way round? Hold on, let me just process this. Say that again. Absence of evidence yeah. is not evidence of absence. So almost in our whole little, my world of law of attraction, manifesting, just because you stop digging up the seed before you can't see something happening does not mean that it's not happening. Ooh. So the very fact that there is an absence of any evidence that it's happening does not mean that there is an absence. Do you know, like, I can't, yes, happens. I totally so, get it. It's like if you plant a tree, okay, who's going to plant a tree? Let's say you've grown your own tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> like, who's going to plant a tree? Let's be real. Let's say you're planting tomatoes and you put your seeds in. Yeah. And I'm guessing you water them and sing to them and do whatever you want to do. They're not going to sprout like the next day. But something's yeah. happening. You just yes. can't see it. So I think that's what it is. Evidence of... <laughs> absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. I it's actually... One of the way I love that. Yeah. So that I, it's something I try to remind myself of because you just always constantly be like, oh, it's stagnant, nothing's happening. And actually, you don't know what's going on behind the... Ooh, I love that one. Thanks for sharing that one, Rach. If only All right. I oh, I'm, I'm, I'm right. really interested in your answer to this one. Something you like that others may consider weird. Oh. Something I like that people consider weird. You're not normal, come on. <laughs> Shall I share Sorry. mine and then it might prompt you? Yeah, yeah, you share yours. You know when you've got you, the dryer, like the wash, you've got the washing machine and you've got the dryer, the clothes yeah. dryer. You know when you, you clean the filter of the dryer and there's all that fluff? I love taking the fluff out the dryer and looking at it and feeling it. It's not sexual or anything, <laughs> I promise. Well, I get on a similar vein, I do like pulling all my hair out of a hairbrush. I find that quite satisfying. Would I have noticed it? My mum always says it's disgusting. She's like, how is there any hair left on your head? And an old housemate of mine still to this day finds my hair on his carpets. <laughs> so there's always a lot of hair coming out of my hairbrush. But I get weird satisfaction around it because it's just like, yeah, and then I always think, my mum would always say, you should throw it in the garden because then the birds can use it for a nest. But I thought that was a bit weird. Oh, yeah. I put mine down the toilet. Is that bad? Yeah, I wouldn't be putting it down the toilet. Would it not all just block the drains? So far, so good. And I've got a lot of hair. <laughs> you do, actually. <laughs> but you've got far more than mine. So, yeah, uh, I feel like that was a crap answer, but... I don't know, feel black coffee, strong black coffee. Ew. I don't have, I don't like milk in my coffee. I don't like milky drinks. So I just drink black coffee, which people say tastes like you're licking an ashtray, but. That could be one. 
I also oh, yeah. love the fact that by now the listeners are going to know the vibe of our coaching calls. <laughs> Just bonkers. <laughs> Which Just we like... did. We, we know it was shitloads of value as well, but we had such a laugh, didn't we, during <laughs> yeah. our calls? <laughs> we did. We did. It never. It genuinely always used to feel like a catch up with my pal. Oh, it's awesome. I love it. Oh, I've missed you so much. Right, where are we? Number eight. Three things you love about yourself. I love my strength, mm. which I don't always realise I have at the time, but I always power through. I love my I love my eyes actually. I'll go to a physical feature and um, although look at them now. Mm, Beautiful. Sad and, tired eyes and I love my ability to forgive mm, that is a powerful one mm. for sure I, really, I love all of, all of those about you too I can be an absolute I'll take no shit nope. but I equally don't hold on to a grudge yeah it's just I'm I I always let go in the end it's a bloody good job you don't <laughs> and you sometimes, sometimes I cling on and I don't want to let go and I'm like no but eventually I do I do I love that okay if you could be a mythical creature what would you be and why be a unicorn because everyone look like loves unicorns and they're just all like colorful and magical and what have you and I, I actually as I said unicorn had to think because you know sometimes like I get always get a bit confused around like what's mythical and what's just dead like old to like dragons are they mythical or did they exist and, di- and dinosaurs and I'm like well dinosaurs did exist did exist but I think dragons. dragons well I saw the film at the cinema the other day the legend of the ten rings and yes it's a film and it's completely made up but they had a Chinese dragon in there and I was like I wonder if that actually, I, I'm going to go with it existed because anything's possible. So let's go with dragons were real. Okay. Well, I don't want to be a dragon. I want to be, <laughs> I want to be a unicorn. Because everyone loves it. Who doesn't love a unicorn? I've got unicorns on my bottle. There you go. I want to be that one. I want to be that pink one looking all sassy. That's who I want to be. <laughs> I want to be the one eating cake. I'm that one eating cake. <laughs> standard (laughs) okay last question imagine this really really far in the future you're like over 100 years old and you're on your deathbed and you're looking back over your life what are you most proud of yourself for that I didn't settle for a life that everybody else is living that I made decisions to break away from the norm be that you know going off traveling on by myself or even move into to Dublin, which was from a very settled life in Manchester. And everyone was like, what is she doing? I followed what felt right for me, despite what everybody else was saying. And therefore, on my deathbed, I would, I would have, if my deathbed arrived tomorrow, would I have regrets? No. Wow. What a great position to be I in. I hope it doesn't, though. Get, you know, yeah, don't. no, I hope you don't either. <laughs> yeah. You're not done yet. You're not even getting started. Exactly. No, exactly. Really beautiful. Thank you for sharing that, Rach. And I've no, I'm you gonna dive it. So just FYI, listeners, because it's just another funny thing to share. I sent Rachel an email with these questions on just so she could have a little glance over, prepare if she wanted to. And she's not got the email. So literally, she's this is the first time she's seen them. So here we go. Who knows what's going to come up? No, who knows? Who well, knows? I asked her to share openly and honestly, because the most important thing for me and the whole reason why I'm doing this mini interview series is so um, you can understand what it's like being a client of mine. Everyone's different. They all have their own journey. But I just want Rachel, and I know she will, share honestly, openly from the heart how the experience was. So First question, Rachel, when mm-hmm. you came to me for coaching, what was you struggling with? I had since, so I think when I started with you with coaching, I was 34, so it was about a year ago now. I think it was this time last year, Vic. Yeah. And I was just, I think we were in, uh, I think our second lockdown. I think the pandemic had given an awful lot of time to think. And I will also caveat that with saying, I think lots of benefits came from that lockdown and the covid pandemic as a result of kind of just highlighting certain areas of life and you know what i was just tired of feeling shit about myself and it's something that i had done 
genuinely one of my earliest memories is as, as at three years of age my mum had me sat on the bed and was putting tights on me and I was poking my belly and I was genuinely even as a kid just being like oh oh and it's a feeling I've had my entire life just never feeling at a point of acceptance it wasn't a case of I want to love myself and adore myself I just wanted to go this is this is how I am and it's Fine. I wanted to learn how to treat myself the way that I treat everybody around me, even strangers who you hear, you know, you see a randomer in the shop and you say your dress looks nice and they go, oh, no, it's shy. It's from Primark. And, and you're like, it looks fab. Own the compliment. But I would I wouldn't do it to myself. And I just I was just tired. I was just so aware of I have an elder sister who's 10 years older who. um is always down on herself, always on crash diets is not. And I was, I was in that slippery slope myself and I was just over it. I, I was just like, there's got to be another way. I remember you shared with me, and I know you won't mind sharing this because you said it on the testimonial. You said the first time you spoke to me when we had the consultation call, it felt like you'd spoke out loud this dirty little secret you had yeah. about being, how you used yeah. to binge eat. Yet yeah, no one would, I wouldn't even be, I'd say I'm quite open with, I'm not someone that holds my emotion. If, if I'm happy, the world knows about it. If I'm sad, the world knows about it nobody knew anything of that and it was it was like this dirty little secret when it was this binge eating scenario of that very vicious cycle of oh I've had a shit day so I'll chain myself up and do this but then I'll starve myself tomorrow and punish myself or I've been really good for three days so I deserve to have x amount of food tonight everything food wasn't just about um giving me energy it had so much more hold and meaning and emotion to it and it was would not of no one around me would have an have a clue yeah how was that affecting your everyday life I know it was over a year ago now but if you can remember like how it was stopping you from being who you wanted to be well there was numerous times where it was almost like openly if someone wanted to go out for a meal or whatever, I'd be full and embracing it going, oh, come on, let's treat ourselves. Duh, duh, duh. Because no one, it wasn't, there was a stage where I was really hooked into um, dieting that I, I wasn't living life. I was so obsessive around what I was eating, et cetera, that I kind of limited personal life because I was so scared of gaining any weight. And then the other side of that would be, I would go out and be the life and soul and be like, yeah, let's get dessert, let's get this. But in my head be thinking, okay, well, I don't, I just won't, I'll, I'll just have beans on toast tomorrow or I'll just, you know, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll just do a juice detox for five days afterwards. So no one would, people would have just gone like, oh, Rachel's just coming out for a meal and we're having a laugh and a few drinks. And they wouldn't realise then the punishment that I would inflict on myself afterwards as a result. And then it gets worse when you then fail because what I was always noting was my ability to stick on a diet was just getting harder and harder and harder. And I kept thinking, why? I've done this before. I've done this before. Why can't I do it now? But it was almost some days I couldn't even get past one day of it. In the end, for me, it, and I'm not shitting you, when I said one hour, the last time I promised myself, and the funny thing is, when we promise ourselves, we mean it with every cell of our being, like, I promise this time I mean it all the reasons why I'm going to work do it because I hate myself so much and all these reasons yeah. one hour and then after that I was like seriously and I need some big ass help and I have no idea what to do because I physically can't diet anymore yeah yeah it was like my body was just like enough enough yeah and it was like a hunger it was a hunger that I could never fill no matter how much I was eating and I kept thinking oh it's because I've joined a gym since moving here and doing weight so I'm hungry and I was always obsessive about the fact of like Christ how much weight would I have gained had I not actually been going to the gym like I've only gained x one it was just 
exhausting yeah I'd say 90% of the clothes in my wardrobe were ones that I once used to fit in or was hoping to fit in and it was just I was just tired of it Mm. I was just over it why did you and again these questions some of them I'm going to be asking you to like say nice things about me well I'm not asking you to say nice things but you'll see what I mean but I'm going to ask a question anyway why did you choose to work with me over other coaches that do something similar to what I do because I'd never come across a coach that does something like what you did Mm -hmm. and you kept coming up in my um Instagram feed so not in my I wasn't following you to start but you know I can't Mm -hmm. remember you go to the next tab along and it has links related to you so I was always following quite like sort of spiritual people like law of attraction type things and you kept flashing up as just posts that you'd done on your page that I could then just see oh and I kept Instagram yeah algorithm (laughs) yeah I kept noticing it and just being like I think no I've noticed this girl before and I think then we had maybe Gina and Kim in um in common etc and I did I just and like your like your energy your buzz like I instantly was just like I love this girl's buzz I love it when you get a word wrong and you don't care (laughs) to correct a post I remember you posted something with a smile and you were like you'd done a post and you were like got food in my in my teeth but I don't care anyway I just was like I love that and I think I started to message you and just to ask some questions because it was genuinely, I hadn't, I didn't know of this as a, I kept thinking, I don't want to go to a counsellor. I don't want to go to, I don't want to go down a medical route mm-hmm. with this. I equally don't want to go to a nutritionist or a dietitian who'll go to me. No, when you're craving chocolate, you actually want magnesium. So have a magnesium oh. pill instead. And you're just like. Fuck off. Yeah, like what? What a load of shite is a fucking bar of chocolate fuck off like I almost was just like I didn't know anyone that really understood the thing and I always likened it to people that I like a drink but I'll drink to get drunk I'm you know you look up binge drinker that's me if I'm not on it I'm not interested Mm. I have no dependency on it and I can happily not drink for months and not feel a craving for it and I can have booze sitting in the house and doesn't impact me and I kind of felt that my situation with food was what alcohol is to somebody else but people understand it with alcohol they don't understand it with food and that's where I found it hard to even I almost felt like I couldn't open up to anyone because people would just be like what just Just stop eating it then yeah (laughs) yeah yes and I, I almost just was like who so it was it was just from chatting to you and I think we we ended up kind of emailing didn't we and we had that first call and it was like I was I felt about three stone lighter after that call because it was the first time I'd heard myself actually say the words so let me just think of them over in my head I was saying the words and I was ad- admitting to my behaviors and the vicious behaviors and the cycles that I was in and I remember actually then we were comparing sort of stories as to oh my god did you ever do this yeah like you'd I couldn't buy anyone a box of chocolates for their birthday unless it was on the morning of so that as I was going because if I bought it and brought it back you guarantee it'd be like it's calling my name because it's naughty it's banned you're not allowed it Mm. and I genuinely have probably bought on one present the same person five boxes of chocolate (laughs) because I ate four of them do you know what I mean it was like and I think it was The ability to have the chat about it, but also with humour. I didn't, Mm. out of all my life scenarios of which, you know, we all have our various demons and issues and caveat that by saying I'm a a very blessed and fortunate human being, but we still all have our paradigms that probably aren't wired correctly and we we look to deal with them. I I didn't want something that was weighing heavy on me that was like, oh, tell me about your family, tell me about your childhood. It was the sense of humour and just that, the fact that you'd been there and done that. I didn't want to loves to run, you know, 10K before work and, you know, 
only eat organic whole foods and cuts out dairy and gluten telling me that I need to do x y and z and some people that is what they need for me I just needed someone to go yeah I get it and this is how it happened for me and this is where I'm at now because it was having the ability to look at someone and go they've done it they've got through this Mm -hmm. they have got through this and I'll be honest Vic you've got through something that was far more extreme than what my experience has ever been you know I was never anorexic I was never I was never clinically diagnosed as the your reality was I am in this diet binge trauma and everything that you felt around that is true it's real yeah but people don't it's almost like if you ask anyone on the street eating disorders disordered eating they'll go anorexia or bulimia binge eating yeah. no you're just greedy yes yeah you're just a fat bastard do you know what I mean like it's just yeah. it was never there was never like an understanding around it and why I would never have gone well I have an eating disorder and I remember using the term disordered eating and I was like yeah that is the word yeah because that it's nothing we think it's something wrong with us yeah but it's not it's the diet culture that's yes we have dis we had disordered eating but that's nothing to be ashamed of and it can absolutely be not I don't want to use the word fix but we can heal ourselves our relationship with food in our bodies yeah the disordered eating just melts away doesn't it exactly exactly how did you feel about the investment because this can be a big block for some people mm. in coaching how did you feel about the investment when you were considering coaching I think because I've had an experience of when I I've invested in myself numerous times, certainly in the past three, four years with kind of like a personal coach and um, kind of all on the line of mindset. I had a very toxic and negative mindset in my 20s. So I think it was less of a hurdle for me because I'd kind of made those bigger investments before and seen the benefits. Mm-hmm. Um, but certainly at the start of my entire just personal growth journey with those kind of investments, I remember kind of thinking like, oh, is this wise? But you know what? For me, if I compare it to what it was back then when it was on a different journey with a different type of coach to this one now, it was a I've exhausted all options. There is no other choice. And it's just money. I get more of it every month. I have a job. I'm blessed. I'm never going to go hungry. I'm never going to lose the home. Like I have everything to gain. And if the most if I just lose some money that's fine because what money am I spending on a binge eating session every couple of days yeah I love that and I would Um, absolutely say it's what always really surprised me was what you give for that money Vic do you know what I mean like you were always there at the end of a a phone or even if you know the if I hadn't checked in for two days you were there checking in you would like there's absolutely no doubt in my mind that that was up there as one of the most worthwhile investments genuinely genuinely it's good I care so much I'm not saying other coaches don't care but it's part of who I am yeah to be lying in bed at night thinking of my clients from a non-sexual perspective obviously you know what I mean like to wake up and think of my clients like Because I know what this means to each and every one of you because I was there before and I know how fucking scary it can yeah, be. Yeah, and Vic, that's what came through every time. Like, your care was there from that initial call to even now once our session's ended and we'll always check in with each other and, like, genuinely, there's a real... Like, you feel it. You absolutely know how much you care you were almost like you would preempt the stage that they're going to go into next before it actually landed to kind of be like just checking in everything okay like do you need some tough love or do you need a bit of extra yeah but also the accountability and it wasn't like a a drill sergeant major but for me sometimes if you'd have said uh rach gives 20 quid and yeah i'll check in with you a couple of days a week for two weeks Where's the, where's the personal accountability for that? An investment of such magnitude, something that's going to create such a magnitude of change and take the hard work and the unpleasant work needs an investment to make you stick to it. Yeah. How many times in January have we all joined a gym with a 40 quid joining fee and then not showing up again? 
This is why I choose to spend my money on a personal trainer because I wouldn't dare waste somebody's time. I'll waste my own money, but I won't waste somebody's time. And this was my whole thing with a coach, which is I can do like an online course and not have to engage or speak to anyone, but am I going to do that or am I going to watch Netflix? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But if I know that you've said, Rachel, this is the time, da 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 that's just the person I am. I can be very disciplined in some areas when it's for everybody else. But when it's for my work, who oh yeah, pay me. But they don't pay me for the hours that I end up having to put in. The expectation I put on myself for everybody else, I never tend to apply it directly to my own personal life. And I wish I'd get better at it because I'd save a bloody fortune, but I'm probably not going to. So for me, I just know myself well enough to go, for something this big, I need accountability. Oh wow! I needed I'm, more. I'm very... I needed more than I can read a book on yeah. intuitive eating and that educate me. No, yeah, I'm the same. Even if someone's got a course or a group program, I'm like, I don't want the group. I want you with undivided yes. attention on me and all the things. So we're very similar. Yes. That. Definitely, definitely. How, how quickly did you? And it's not about speed. We know that. But how quickly did you start to feel? that your relationship with food and yourself started to shift during the program? What I noticed throughout was very quick. I'd say the first two weeks I was like, oh, look at me. Yeah, this is fine. Oh, I want pasta at 11 o'clock. I'm going to have pasta at 11 o'clock. There's no rules. (laughs) And then absolute sheer fear and terror set in. Like it was hands down one of the most unpleasant experiences ever as all of that was coming out. And it was then compounded with, I think, the third round of fucking COVID and lockdown and Christmas. But to this, so I never got home for that Christmas. But actually, I think that was a blessing. I think it was an absolute gift from the universe because I would have just been the most unpleasant person to have been around at Christmas at home, feeling that way and feeling so shit about myself because every fear was coming out. What if I gain weight? What if I do this? And actually what I found myself doing was I opened up to a select few friends and said this. And I was almost, I think it's quite sad now in hindsight, but kind of like warning them that I'm doing this. I've had a bit of a bad relationship with food and I'm trying to seeking some help on this. And if I gain three stone, I gain three stone. I was almost kind of like preparing everyone for doing this. And it was almost like, Rachel, why? Hindsight, I look back and go, why? Or like, again and I think what was compounding I think my stress and anxiety about it all was that I went into information overload with this I started following everyone on Instagram that was intuitive eating and so many passionate people and I got the books and I you know I got the fuck it diet book by that Caroline Caroline and I got um, health at every size book and it I remember ringing you saying like but Vic, if I eat an apple, am I going back into diet culture? And you went, just eat a fucking apple. Rachel. Yeah, I remember that. Fucking... You're allowed to eat an apple. Yeah. <laughs> and you was like, shit, because I, I agree, your head was so full. Yeah. And this is the thing. It's I'm not saying everyone's wrong and I'm right. But when you choose to put your trust in one person. Yeah. Follow what they say. Yeah. Yeah. And that's and I just went, I got information overload I was almost thinking but if I crave some fruit am I going into diet culture and then I remember saying to you like okay I guess this is like when you go home at Christmas and you eat tins of quality street for four days on the bounce that by boxing day you're like I just want a bowl of soup and a fucking banana and you feel your body craving it and I I allowed every craving I was eating the maddest things at the maddest times But the whole time through, you said to me on numerous occasions, I think twice, three times, Rach, you have a choice. You can go back to dieting. You can lose weight. And I, it was just a constant feeling of, A, it was first the feeling of, don't hit me with your logic bit. I know that it was almost like, see what you're doing here. But it was just this inherent feeling of, this is shit, but I know the alternative is shitter. I have to get through this I have to move through it and the learning I was doing about my body like I came off the contraceptive pill I started using Mm. that app because a big thing for me was like the hormones and certain times of the month and 
the fear of once a month going like, oh my God, oh my God, I've, def- I've definitely gained two stone now. Definitely gained two stone. And then you're like, well, actually, you know, you just... Give it a week it. and you're like, oh, I'm, you're beyond yeah. saying hormones are cooling. And you're like, yeah. oh, I'm all good again. Yeah. But it was just understanding all of that and actually gaining an appreciation for my body that I don't think I ever had. Like I never gave my body appreciation for the fact that I didn't get COVID when we we're in the midst of a global pandemic. Because to me, I was taken for granted for the fact that I just have this inherent feeling of I'm healthy. I really, I, I never get sick. Mm. I never get sick. And I, I was constantly throughout COVID. I won't get it. it was never in my mindset that I was going to get it. I never was going to be scared on this. But I never sat there and went, Rachel, your body actually doesn't, you don't get sick. And your body is, you know, you're 35 and everyone thinks you're about fucking 12. And yeah. you've not got a grey hair. Do you know what I mean? Like, it was like I was never given any appreciation to it because I didn't understand what my body was doing. Like, I, it was listening to those cues. And the thing of sometimes that it was like, well, I'm hungry. I don't actually know what I want. I'm not actually craving anything. It was almost like when you started to make everything accessible and everything's allowed, genuinely the shine does go. Rach, eat six Toblerones with your dinner. I don't want one. Yeah, it's food can become a bit boring, which can be a bit fucked up sometimes. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. It was almost like I am just eating because I'm hungry and I'm starting to feel a bit, I feel a bit sick that I'm that hungry. I need to eat, I need to eat. But as we said, and we've gone through that journey, I think what's always kept me stuck on it was I knew what the alternative was and that wasn't a happy place. I think as time's gone on and my body has settled at that its natural weight, which is different for everyone, mm-hmm. and I've realised that my biggest fears haven't come true. But I've also yeah. had to delve into why did you have those fears, Rachel? Because you would absolutely tear a strip off anyone that reacted to somebody in any size body and criticized them for it with absolute disdain you wouldn't let anybody else do it to anyone you wouldn't let somebody do it to somebody else so why would you do it to yourself everybody has their certain point and whatever and I've just allowed my body to find it and yeah I think I said before we started recording here Vic do I look in a mirror and go I love this no I don't but you know what that wasn't to me, that's an unachievable aim. That's still having body bodies and yes. body image as an object to look at. Yes. Whereas it's a, do you know what? I go in and I've got a woman's body. Do you know what? I've got nice eyes. I, I, I accept it. I, I accept where my body is. Yeah. And I give appreciation for the parts that I didn't tend to appreciate before how has it how has it changed your life in the in the way how you refer to food going out getting intimate with people like how has your journey to relationship and food with food and your body how has that affected your life in general day to day I've noticed like I very much notice how food makes me feel now Mm. so I will eat when I need to eat I will eat what I want to eat when I need to eat it. But I find my, and it was this whole thing about the apple analogy I gave before as to, oh God, am I going back into diet culture? Sometimes I know, Rachel, you feel you feel ugh, sluggish, get some fruit in you and I don't want it. And I pay the price of it. I feel like shit. But I've done it and I'll do it again. And then other times I'll go, oh, I can go. Um, I never really noticed this as a thing in the UK. They love chicken fillet rolls in Ireland. Everyone you goes into this. Roll. Yeah, like everyone goes into a centra and buys like a baguette and gets, you know, like a bird's eye chicken southern fried fillet. Yeah. Chopped up with and on a on a baguette Ooh. with like lettuce and salad. Nice. And it's nice, but I was like, everyone's like, everywhere does chicken fillet rolls. And I was like, is this a thing? They love it over here. Love it. Yum. And so as an example of that is I love a chicken fillet roll. I don't love how it makes me feel afterwards. So I make a choice that I tend to just not get them because they don't make me feel good. It's about Mm. how I feel, not how I look. And then other times I'll be like, fuck it, I'm hungover and I want a chicken fillet roll and a bag of Monster Munch. I'm going to have it and continue to feel like death. 
it's fine. It's all about what I, you know, what I need in that time. If I'm hungover, then <laughs> I just need to get through the next hour. Give me whatever's going to, you know, I'm not going to sit there and eat watermelon hungover. It's not going to do no. anything for me. But it's equally, as I say, if I know I've got a very busy day in work, I'll try and make better choices because I know that I will just crash and burn in the afternoon if I eat certain things. So I've tailored my diet, my nutrition to, you know, dairy doesn't really do much for me. So I just cut it out. You know, I tend to notice that if I eat gluten-free pasta, I don't feel as bloated if I eat normal pasta. I'm still eating the pasta. I'm just making a choice around what makes me feel better or not. I equally won't eat stuff I don't like. My mother will try and ram vegetables down my throat any chance she gets, and I've just no interest. So it's just kind of picking, this works for me, and this doesn't. And equally not not applying rules. Mm. Sometimes I don't want breakfast. Sometimes I'm not hungry till 2 o'clock. Other times I wake up at 6 o'clock and I'm ravenous, and I'll just eat when I want to eat. So in my office there is chocolate bars everywhere, and... I we're in the office about three days a week now and it annoys me because the we buy all this chocolate and our secretary if we eat the chocolate she's like you're all scavengers you're all fat bastards you're all this and I very simply go don't buy it then don't it's there to be eaten but I remember at about half 10 I picked up a Kit Kat and she said to me you can't be having Kit Kats at half 10 and I was like watch me (laughs) I don't live in these rules but it was mad it was it's a big thing I picked up is how much rules other people have Mm. the rules that other people have and try and implement onto you do you yeah do you think that you the way you've just described your relationship with food now which seems to me you choose how you want to feel and it's all from a place of self-care self-love or full responsibility that I actually don't care if I feel shit I just want to eat the thing yeah could you have been in this space without going through the journey we've been no no absolutely not no chance because I tried it I was yeah I was trying it from about the age of 10 do you know what I mean like it was absolutely not it would have been the shame the embarrassment throw everything out put putting the food in the bin and putting washing up liquid on it and do you know what I mean like these are it's one of the other tales of what we laughed about like the extreme both did of, that like absolute like ridiculousness yeah to anybody else maybe that wasn't in that but that was at my reality and yeah like I I had to train myself to be like have certain things in the fridge that normally I would never have trusted myself around. And as I say, they lose their power. Yeah. And there's other times where I can be in a shop and queuing up and I'm not hungry and I can see chocolate there. And I just go, no, don't get it. If you want it, just go back to the shop. It's a two minute walk. It's constantly always saying, it's always there. It's reassuring myself that you can have it any time that you want. Mm. Because the big thing of my food was food was either good or bad. You've been good, so you get a treat. You've been bad, you don't get this treat. It's This is a rare thing, you can't have it. I know exactly where my issues around certain foods came from. And I look at my nephew and absolutely brings sheer joy to me that my nine-year-old nephew, I think I told you, I'll never forget yeah. him eating a whisper. And he went, I'm full now. He gave me half a whisper back. Yeah. And I was like, what? And he went, you put that in the fridge for me. And I was genuinely like, never in my life remember when we had the dog food conversation that blew your mind that did didn't it yeah and I've said this to so many people they're like the dog's always greeting and I'm like because he's fucking hungry he's hungry you're starving him my dog still to this day has food all the time is an Alaskan Malamute which isn't a dog that's classed as I'm sorry which is a dog that's classed as greedy where you can't have food he has it down all the time and he goes and eats it when he's hungry and he leaves it and but because we train them from a yeah. from a young age, this is dinner time. You're only allowed this amount at this time of day. They eat it all really fast and then it's gone. They don't, that's not available to them to listen yeah. to their bodies. And it's like us, if we're giving it out us ourselves and then taking it away and then being like, you're only allowed to eat this tonight because tomorrow it's going to be gone again. 
then we're going to be binging and then yeah. starving and we're going and to- this is what i think the dog thing did blow my mind because it was like so many people it's like they're dragging the dog out of the dining room because he's you know begging at the table and it's like because he's fucking hungry yeah because you've you've starved him i actually feel bad like this is what how we used to be with our dog like he would get one meal a day poor thing was probably ravenous <laughs> and he got no bloody food off me but off my plate but <laughs> it is that absolutely blew my mind and that's the thing for me a big thing is that i want kids in my life you know i see kids in my future i do not want my kids having my issues mm. and it's funny because my mom doesn't have these issues but me and my two sisters all do. How ironic. Yeah. But now mom, you, you broke that. I mean, it wasn't a lineage because your mum didn't had it, but that mm. could have, you could have easily passed that on. I mean, I, that's where I learned mine from. This is no blame whatsoever, but I learned all of my eating behaviours from my mum. Mm. Whereas if she didn't have them, I mean, I'm glad she did because then I wouldn't be here now. I wouldn't be sharing this conversation yeah. with you today so I'm glad it all happened but I wouldn't have learned that from anywhere so when you do have children you won't be passing on toxic behaviors around how you feel yeah. about your body and food yeah and it's it's like the little things I'll never forget as a kid going mom can have a chalk ice for breakfast and she was like you don't eat ice creams at nine in the morning and I was like why 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 and actually I think of that a lot because I just think, still to this day, I was like, who says? Who said? I remember saying, who set that rule? And actually, I know for me, it's about like, you know, if my nephew, when I go home, says, can I have a chocolate bar before he's had his breakfast? My response would now be like, well, no, let's have your breakfast first. And then if you're still hungry, you can have a chocolate bar. Yeah, that's how I parented myself when I was at the beginning of my journey. Like, it, there's a difference between no you can't have it because it's bad to yeah. okay well because I care about your health let's give you a nourishing breakfast and if you still want it of course you can have it yeah it's it's how you talk to yourself isn't it for sure exactly exactly if you had to use three words to describe me as a coach what would those three words be hilarious <laughs> energetic and magical genuinely thank you and what about if you had to describe me in three words as a person warm hilarious again (laughs) just kind you're a very you're a very very kind soul thank you I appreciate everything you are you're a you're a good egg as we'd say in Manchester do you say that I, in Derby? We have that saying in Derby, you're a good egg. I said you're it to Baz the other day and he was like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I was like, never mind. <laughs> um, do, do you feel, I think you have mentioned this before, but I want to ask you outright, do you feel that the investment of your time, energy, what you've gone through with me in this programme and the money that you've paid, do you feel that it was all worth it to where you are now? One thousand million percent Yay. one thousand um, million percent what like would you, you say? don't see it you don't see it like you only can join the dots when you're looking back mm. so when you're in the midst of that especially in the early days you're just like oh don't look at this and when I look back and it's interesting because having this conversation with you is making me reflect back because this has been just part of my course of living life now for mm. so long that it's things feel a lot more natural and I'm having to think a lot less around certain behaviors and needs. It's, it's almost because I've reprogrammed my habits in some way yeah. and some things that still, I do still question and well, why and that. And I think that's important to state in any journey like this, that the triggers are always there, that you're always going to have to have those questions and those conversations in your mind to kind of give you some clarity and go, well, why, why has that done that to me? And why am I, Am I denying myself this? Why am I doing this? Why am I thinking this? That it's, even that's almost become habitual in a way. Do you know what I mean? Like the question, it was exhausting to start, I'll be honest at the beginning, but now it's, it's looking back. If I look, look at myself a year ago now to now and the, the horrendous habits I was in, probably one of the worst points with the whole disordered eating side to now, like genuinely it's, like night and day it's black and white so different 
It's incredible. And if someone was like on the fence, not knowing whether to take the leap or not, would you say anything to them? I say just jump, just jump, because you're already out. Like you're keeping yourself in limbo. Jump and just hit acknowledge it hit rock bottom with it because rock bottom is the best place to start lit yeah. being in limbo and going back and forth back and forth you'd have every bit of luck i could give you to 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 accomplish it on your own and possibly some people will but you a thousand percent will if you invest in yourself have that whole accountability piece and just get the lessons to have somebody that's got the experience and to go yeah i had that as well this isn't weird you're not the only one and to be able to look up to someone to go like and that is so inspiring when you have someone who's lived through it that can go yeah this is now yeah I do that I still do that now let's let's talk about this I would be like if you're sitting on the fence I'd come and push you off that fence <laughs> and I'll be there with a the net to catch yeah. you, all of you <laughs> and sort you out and help you exactly exactly so you are I want to share if people want to ask you or connect with you you're off the grid though aren't you you've come I'm off. off the grid I left the old social media world a couple of months ago now because I thought again this was one of my things I became so um inquisitive around my own habits and everything that my I didn't leave Instagram almost because I was following people that made me feel shit about myself I was very select as to who I followed it was all positive people do you know what though I felt and it was the people that were you know within the there was a group here in Ireland who have a specific intuitive eating two sisters fabulous they were fabulous women really passionate and care about it but it was like seeing all this on my newsfeed every day was almost it started to become toxic positivity to me yeah 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 yeah. it started to become unhealthy for me because it was almost like as I said, when I kind of started a couple of months in, I was allowing myself to get information overload and it was making me question things. It was making me confused about things. And actually then I would, it was almost be like, it did, it kind of felt like my feed was too positive and it was almost like that became toxic in a way. And I noticed just bad habits about, I'd wake up in the morning, the first thing I'd do is check on Instagram. And do you know what, after a week of leaving and the habit going of going to check your phone, I don't miss it at all. Yeah. I don't I miss really you. Care. I miss your interaction from, yeah. from my stuff, but we have we have each other on WhatsApp. So exactly, so exactly. Connect, but, but no, by all means, if anyone did want to reach out or if they want someone that wants to speak to a client before they make a commitment to you, then by all means, give my phone number out or email. I will happily, happily, like virtually push <laughs> them off that fence because like I genuinely cannot talk more passionately about this because it's such a a I was going to say a small circle it's not a small circle of us that have these issues it's yeah. just only a small number of us are willing to acknowledge them yes. and to seek help and do something about it and that community of people that have know exactly what you're going through can you know you that can guide somebody through it with absolute love care kindness and hilarity because at the end of the day we've all got to have a fucking laugh haven't we that's one of the things I loved about working with you is if you can't laugh at your own self and your life then what what is there oh, left? we were like cackling witches around the cauldron weren't we we <laughs> were just the voice cat- notes were the best like I remember <laughs> that time near Christmas you were having like a proper meltdown and I was like right then I was like right my intent and I, I remember sitting with myself before I applied and I absorbed everything you were saying and I was like right my fucking intention is for her to see who she actually is stand in her power and realize like the journey that she's on and halfway through is so worth it without me just telling you as a teacher and like yeah. lecturing you so I'm like I'm I'm gonna ask a set question so she thinks about things and that's when I said to you you can go and diet by yeah. all means. And then you were like, but I don't want to do that. And I was like, yeah. okay, great. Let's get back on track then. And, and-, that, and Vic, that's the, that's the key. This isn't a, and I think that's what I really want to stress. You are a coach in the true sense of a word. You are not sitting there giving a lecture. This is what's going to happen now. You would almost 
PM, your questions, your leading questions, you never answered a question for me. You just asked questions to help me suss out what I needed to figure out that because my mind was so clouded, I couldn't do it alone. And that's the difference. If you want, if you want fact and step by step, get a book, get a book, but it's not going to challenge you in the same way. Like it's not going to, it's not going to know, you know, you might've read a chapter four months, four chapters ago and it not be relevant to you now. And you've forgotten about it. Whereas this is live time. It's happening now. And you know, your challenges and, triumphs from this might come at different points to everybody else's journey everyone's journey on this is unique yeah but no I would get off the fence thanks Rachel it's been an absolute pleasure oh I buzzed off seeing you and if anyone wants anyone listening who does want to reach out to Rachel reach out to me and then I will pass her details Absolutely. on and I'm going to press the stop the recording so I'll say bye to the queens listening and catch you on the next episode. Bye, queens.